Welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a density plot with ggplot2. I'm also going to show you how to cre create random data with the rnorm function. So to begin we got to start with the rnorm function. So why don't we just come down here to the console and press question mark rnorm just to pull up the documentation about what I'm talking about here. So what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to be able to randomly generate data from a normal distribution and we're going to do that with the rnorm function so here in the usage it shows us the format for that function let me show you how that works so if you're, if you're using the rnorm function inside what you're going to start with is the number of data points you want say for example we wanted 10 10 data points and you can also set the mean and standard deviation so if i set the mean to zero and the standard deviation to one and run this line we're going to get 10 different data points sampled from a normal distribution so we can also assign all this data to an object so why don't we start with assigning it to an object uh, but we also want to create it as a data frame because we're going to be feeding it into ggplot so the way we want to do that is use a, a data frame function and let me get rid of that just to show you this format here with the data frame we can define our columns with a quote and the name of that column so let's just call it X and then we're going to be assigning to X some values here we can do that and now type our norm 10 mean equals 0 standard deviation equals 1 okay so we have this function here which will be highlighted and run is going to generate some data and this is all wrapped in this data frame object so when we run this we're going to be creating a, a table over here so let's take a look at what that looks like now so we have one column here named X and then our simulated pieces of data and maybe a hundred maybe 10 is not enough let's bump it up to a hundred and we can now use this for our plotting so since we're, we know we're going to be using the ggplot library, let's add it to the top of our code here. And then hit control enter to load it. And now it'll jump down to line 5, and we'll actually start typing out our, our plot. So remember the format for a ggplot. You have the, the ggplot function, and inside that function you add your data, which we've named over here. And then you also have an aesthetic mapping function. So we're going to add that as well. Afterwards, you're going to be adding some sort of layer, right? But we can actually do that a little bit later. Let's jump into this aesthetic here and assign what our x is going to be equal to. We're going, it's going to be equal to x. OK? So if I run this, I'm just going to get that blank canvas for our plot right we want to fill this with some data and we're, we since we know we're si we sampled from a normal distribution we're expecting some plot like this right so now we want to add that layer so we add it and in this case it's going to be called geome density and this is a function too so you want to include that at the end there now when we run this we get our our simulated distribution here so this is pretty neat. We had 100 observations. What if we bumped it up to 10,000? Now we have a much bigger data set, and this should be a lot smoother of a, a normal distribution, right? Okay, it's starting to look more and more like a normal distribution. Let's bump it up to 100,000. See how far we can go. Okay, smoothing out. And then lastly, we'll make an even bigger one and run this. It's going to take a little bit longer to compute, but yes, now it's looking a lot more like a normal distribution, which is exactly what we sampled from with the rnorm function. Also, to add just a little bit of clarity here, within this aesthetic mapping function, I have it set up so that x equals x. That might not be very clear what's going on here, so why don't I show you how, how this is working. This x is actually referring to the column name that's within this data set. So, for example, if we change this to be some other name, x data, okay, this is going to have to change to x data. In fact, if I if I run this, let me reduce this down a bit. 
if we click into this data now, you'll see that the column name now is X data. If I try to run this function now, we're getting this object X not found because when we are seeking this X, it doesn't exist. So this actually needs to be more clearly defined as our, as our column associated with this data object. So now when I run it, that's going to work. Another thing, perhaps if it's not clear, this data is the name of this object. So we could change this to data name. And let's say, let's remove the data object up, up here. So now all we have is data name. If we run this now, we're going to get an error as well because this object is not found. This will need to be renamed to our data object. And now we'll be able to run and produce a plot here. So hopefully that makes it a little more clear what these different values are referencing. All right, see you in the next video.